want to thank everyone for coming to celebrate the life of Kathy Jennings. I've gotten to know a little bit about her this week, visiting with the family, and what I've gotten to know is she was a pretty wonderful woman. So I just want to start us off with a word of prayer and then uh, read some things real fast. Dear God, we ask that you would now bring your, your comfort to this room. We've lost a beloved mother, a daughter, a friend, and, and we just pray that you would send your comfort to this room right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Kathy was born in 1958 right here in Dallas and passed away this past week. And as I visited with the family, I, I just heard so many great stories about her. I kind of wish I could have gotten to hang out with her and, and meet her. You know, she's survived by her husband, Gary Carter, and her sisters, Lisa, Judy, and Brenda, her two brothers, Thomas and Dennis, two children, Way and Johnny Jennings, and five grandchildren, Jordan, Lindsay, William, Sarah, and little Serena, who'll be born in February. Kathy also has seven stepchildren, little Gary, Tony, Michael, Jason, Aaron, Tiffany, then Jason, and countless number of neighborhood kids who will always know her as Mama. So what's the purpose of a funeral? In Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 2, we read, It's better to spend your time at funerals than at parties. After all, everyone dies, and so the living should take this to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for sadness has a refining influence on us. A wise person thinks a lot about death, while a fool thinks only about having a good time. And so, it doesn't feel good to come to funerals, but they are good for us, because they remind us that we're all going to have one life to live. That's all we get is one chance. And what are we going to do with it? And so I want to take just a few minutes now, and it's good for us to, to kind of talk and remember the good things we're going to take away from Kathy's life. She, I mean, from the, the stories I got to hear, she impacted a lot of people. So we're going to take a few minutes, we're going to share, you know, what are the things that she did that made you so glad you got to have her as a part of your life? What's a memory that you're going to walk with the rest of your life that's, I'm just a better person because I knew Kathy? Or what's something, you know, she, she seemed like she always enjoyed loud music and laughter and having fun. What's a funny story about her that makes you smile when you think of Kathy? That's what we want to share right now. So Way's going to kick us off. We're going to share. But after he's done, if you have a story to share, just come on up. And we're going to all take turns and just hang out thinking about Kathy for a while. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. My mom would love each and every one of y'all. Um, I'm gonna love her for the rest of my life, and I'll miss her. You know, I mean, she's been my best friend, my mom. Really, uh, the only person I ever had to talk to when I was thinking about something. You know, uh, when I was young, she was here. We played football, me and my brother. I mean, she was the loudest mama. There. <laughs> I remember when I got hurt playing football one time. She leaped that fence on me, think she touched me. Um, but I'll never forget her, you know. And I know it means a lot to her, all y'all being here. And right now, I'd like to ask anybody, actually, I'd like to ask each and every one of y'all, so I'd like to come up here and just share something that y'all remember about my mom. I know she'll hear you. I mean, if you don't want to, you don't have to, but I'd like it if you would. So, whoever wants to. Thank you all again. Loud, loud mama. 
spoke her mind for sure. Uh, good woman. Good stepmama. Everybody thinks of a wicked stepmama. No, not this one. This one was here and she. It's good to see all you here to say goodbye to her. I really thought she was going to beat this. But let me say, I got up this morning thinking of all the wonderful things that Kathy and I did. Maybe not so wonderful. April 21st, 1975, we were baptized in Jesus' name in Truth Church in Fort Worth, Texas. She came up at water speaking in tongues. I don't know if y'all believe in that, but she was born again. I believe she's in heaven. Elvis has already sung Love Me Tender to her. She was a lot of fun. I'll really miss her. And I think it's great that even the kind of person she was, her ex-husband and his wife have showed up to pay their respects. That's the kind of lady she was. You know, uh, I'm, I'm trying to do this before, and it was uh, tough to do. Had my daughter to kind of back me up there, but uh, I don't have anybody to back me up here. But so I'm just going to have to do it. Um, Kathy was my aunt, and she was uh, a real uh, high-spirited woman. Um, and even as a teenager, I remember that's kind of the memory I have of Kathy. Really, is um, the uh, is full of joy and ready to go and let's go do it and um you know as a kid i was you know always uh whenever we would see kathy which you know not a whole lot kathy and i were you know 10 or 11 years 12 years apart and she had her life and you know kind of going and but uh, i always enjoyed that about her always whenever they said you know aunt kathy's coming over it was always you know wow okay i can see aunt kathy again so it was, it was kind of cool um you know, and usually Lisa would come to, and it was always kind of cool to have. I didn't have sisters, so, you know, kind of, they were my dad's younger sisters, and so I kind of always looked at them like that, you know. Uh, and she was, a, uh, I don't know, she just always had that spirit about her. And, you know, I don't know, several months ago, just to kind of back what, oh, this is the reason why I got up here, actually. Uh, several, uh, several months ago, I went to see her, and, uh, you know, we all had them phone calls that, we don't know that Kathy's going to make it another day, or we don't know if she's going to make it another week. So whenever you got that call, you just had to, you know, kind of make your way to go see her. And uh, I did, and uh, we kind of was in the bedroom together. I didn't know where her life was with God, but I wanted to know. And so uh, I went and spoke with her, and I said, I just, you know, what? I was, you know, you don't never know. Somebody's going to kick you out of the room or visit with you when you, when you bring up when you bring this up, and she said, Brian, she goes, I'm good. She goes, I'm good. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's, that's what makes this a whole lot easier to say, bye, Kathy. Yeah. We'll see you soon. For those that don't know me, I am Lisa's daughter, Andrea, and I'm her youngest daughter. And what I would want to say is that Kathy really loved her family, and every year she always reminded me, every, every, my, every year that my birthday came along, she was like, 18 years ago, I lost my job at Doug's to see you, and the story was that my grandma worked at Doug's, and she also worked there, and they told her she can't go to visit me in the hospital when I was being born. And she loved anyways, and that was the kind of person Kathy was. 
And three days before my birthday, it was September 3rd, and I saw her at the hospital. And I whispered in her ear, I was like, 18 years ago, you lost your job at that time. <sighs> and um, there, are, I cannot tell you a memory that I always laughed with Kathy. Kathy was the kind of person that everyone, she made everyone laugh. And she lit up a room. So the day she died, um, my mom was crying. And I told my mom was that um, this isn't goodbye. This isn't, I'll see you later. And it's true. We will see you later because we all know where she is. And I'm going to stop before I just blow her like a baby in some here. by myself and she come down and it's Sunday morning and we gotta gotta have breakfast. And I'm like, okay. They drag me to breakfast. And holidays we made uh, chocolate cream cheesecake. And it was about this tall and we ate it in one night. <laughs> <laughs> So the next day we made another one. <laughs> and Kathy, we went to the fair together. We went to Fourth of July things together. We spent New Year's Eve together. We just she she helped me bury my dog <laughs> in a hundred and ten degree weather. And all we had was a little gardener's hands peg and a butter dish. <laughs> and we're talking about Dudley. And he was an oversized German shepherd. Oh, excuse me, I just did this one. And we dug and we dug and we dug <laughs> and we dug and we finally got it deep enough to put Dudley in the ground. And we buried him. Then we came inside and had beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just one of those things that had to be done. It was 110 degrees. <laughs> but Kathy just wouldn't ever let me be alone. She was always there. She was always taking me places that I knew not where I was going. <laughs> And it was always an adventure. <laughs> and we had so much fun. And she was the most beautiful person I knew. And I love her very much. And I'll miss her. But I had my memories of her. And she'll always be as beautiful as the person. I just want to thank the Lord for being able to know Kathy. If you just take a little bit of a silent for one minute, you can hear her laugh. And that was the most thing I love hearing her laugh. And I just want to ask God to give peace with Johnny. And those that weren't here to be able to make it, give them peace. Let them know that she is going to be missed. Thank you.
Ray told me that um, his mom asked him to share a song at her funeral. And so we're going to share that together now and accompany him on the piano. And if he's ready, we're going we're gonna to try and do this thing. So. If I mess this up, y'all ain't getting your money back. <laughs> I just always feel it just feels wrong somehow. You know, it's like, why is this person sick? My mom has got cancer right now, the same as Kathy did. And, you know, like, it just feels wrong. And I think there's a reason why it feels wrong. 
And that's because as we read the Bible, you know, in Genesis, God didn't create death. He didn't create suffering. He didn't create disease. He gave one simple little command, just saying, do it my way. And for some reason, Adam ignored God, lived life his own way. And as a result of that, ignoring God, living his life his own way, we call that sin. Death entered the world. And that's why it feels wrong, is because God didn't ever intend for us to experience it. He never ex intended to experience separation like, like death is. And God says that everyone has sinned in some way. And that's where we decide to live our own lives separate from the way God wants us to live in. And Hebrews 9.27 says that everyone gets one shot, one life to live, and it's up to us to decide how we want to live it. And then at the end of that life, there's going to be a, a judgment. And when we go through death, we're going to go to the other side of judgment. And in Revelation 20.12, there's a picture of what that judgment looks like. And if you can picture for me a stack of books... Uh, we'll get there. There'll be a stack of books. And inside the stack of books right here, there's a list of every thing that I've ever done, good and bad. But every lie that I told, every time that I was dishonest, every time that I got angry and, and cursed at someone or got angry and yelled at people, all that is all written down somewhere. And, you know, even if no one else saw it, God saw it. And that stack of books is waiting for all of us. Uh, but the good news is there's another book right next to that stack of books. In Revelation 2012, if you go there, there's that stack of books. But there's this other book called the Book of Life. And in it, there's not one action that we do. Uh, in it are just a series of names and a list. And when that judgment happens, God says, which book, set of books do you want to go off of? You want to go off the Book of Life or the books of all your actions? And if your name is written in the book of life, then we get to go to heaven. And if your name is not in the book of life, then you go default down the stack of books, and there's not a chance that any of us have at that point if our name is not in the book of life. I have a better chance of being named to the Dallas Cowboys team than I do of making it on my own good actions. It just doesn't isn't going to happen. So... When I mentioned earlier in Ecclesiastes, it's better to go to a funeral than a party because it's good for us every once in a while to ask ourselves, if we were to die today, we don't know how long we have, do we know for sure that our name is written in that book, the book of life? That's the book that it matters. And the question is, how do we get there? How do we get our name in that book? And it's not hard. The most famous verse in the Bible tells us how to get our name in there. It's the one you see at all the sporting events. You know, people hold up signs. It's John 3, 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that he could take away all those bad actions, all those sins, and he could pay for that penalty instead. And if we believe that he is our Savior and believe he is our Lord, then our name gets written in the book of life. And that's how it works. And Kathy is not in heaven because she did a lot of good things. She's in heaven because she said, God is the one I'm turning to. God's the one I'm leaning on. And God's the one that I am expecting to carry me through and to write my name in that book of life. So I want to just encourage anyone who comes in today, if you don't know if your name is in that book or not, I encourage you to take the time and say, God, I want to give you my life. I want to give you control to be my boss. That's what Lord means. Be my Lord. Be my boss. Tell me what to do. I want to live life your way. And I want you to forgive my sins. I don't want to try to earn my way to heaven. I want you to forgive my sins. So I want to leave you with a couple quick suggestions. Um, you know, this is a hard time for everybody. My first suggestion is best illustrated with a, with a quick story. I have a five-year-old, and she has a heart that's so big. Um, and whenever she sees a, a hurting animal, a hurting bird, or something, she just can we fix it, Dad. And you know, she just really cares about that. So um, you know, we my wife doesn't like animals, so my wife says keep them all outside. So we keep them outside. Um, 
but it wasn't long ago there was a there was a little bird in our backyard that was flopping around and my daughter saw it and wanted us to help the bird and so we tried our best to get close to it. every time we got close to the bird trying to touch it the bird would freak out and flop all around the backyard and you know i couldn't reason with the bird i couldn't explain where i'm trying to help i'm trying to like make you better but the bird just kept fighting me and fighting my daughter and not allowing us to help at times like these god wants to help god wants to draw near to the brokenhearted god wants to comfort those who need comfort and when we fight him it's like that little bird flopping around on its own you know i'm trying to help mend a wing I'm trying to help this bird get back on its feet again. And when we fight God, it makes it so much harder on us. So that's my first suggestion is during this time, just kind of lean on God. Say, God, man, this hurts. This isn't fun. Would you help me? You know, I heard a lot of stories about Kathy, her strength that she had. And, and it says in Psalm 46, 1, that God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help when times of trouble come. This is a time of trouble. So my first suggestion is, is lean into God. He will be there if you ask him to. And he will give you strength. And he'll be your refuge and get you through this. You will get through this. My second suggestion is to talk about Kathy a lot. Um, there's sometimes a tendency because it hurts to talk about Kathy to not talk about her. So my next suggestion is take the time to talk about her. You know, next week as you're thinking about her, don't limit yourself. Don't mute yourself. Talk about her. And if you feel like crying, do cry. You know, you want to take the time to really process and allow, allow yourself to remember the good things about her. You know, I'm going to pray at the end that God kind of cements into our minds that the thoughts about Kathy that will, we want to carry for us for our lives and let those never fade. But it's a good thing during this time to talk about her, talk about how strong she was, how much she fought this cancer, how brave she was, how much she sacrificed for family. It's good to talk about those things. So when, when Thanksgiving hits or different family times, I heard the families go to grandma's after this, you know, talk about it as often as you want to and allow yourself each other space to do that. So that's my second suggestion. So my first suggestion is don't fight with God through the healing process. My second suggestion is talk about it. My third suggestion is not today and not even necessarily next week, but at some point, you have to let her go. She is not here anymore. And, you know, I'm not talking about today. But at some point, you have to say, okay, God, what next? What am I supposed to do? I have to, I have to still live my life. I still have things I have to do. And, and for all those who have the names written in the Book of Life, we're going to see Kathy again someday. So if she's waiting for us. She's in a better place. So at some point, when it's right, you have to let her go. So that's, that's just part of the process of healing. So I just want to take a minute and pray for everyone here. That God does draw near. He's promised to draw near the brokenhearted. He's promised anyone who calls out to his name, he will draw near to them. So I just want to ask him to do that now. And then we're going to have a final opportunity to do a viewing. And then we'll say goodbye to Kathy one last time. If you would all bow your heads with me. Dear God, you knew what it's like to lose a loved one. You lost your dad while you were on earth. You lost family members. You lost friends. You know what this pain is like. And we ask right now that you would comfort us, that you would touch the hearts in this room that are hurting because of Kathy moving on. And we pray that your healing work would happen. I pray that you would soften hearts so that you can help do the healing and that no one in this room would fight with you and struggle against you. But just like that little bird, you would be able to touch hearts and help the healing and comfort we pray for the next few weeks as we start living more and more days without her. I, I pray for the family to have great strength through those times. And like Psalm 46 says, you know, the Lord will be their refuge and their strength. And I pray that that's true for Grandma, for Way, for Gary, for all the different family members. I pray that right now. 
And we ask that you would help us. You know, you said Ecclesiastes, it's good to come to these times so that we'll think about our own lives. If there's anything that we need to do different, any way you want us to live different, knowing that our days are numbered, pray that you would let us know what that is and that we would do it. In Jesus' name, amen. So I mean, um, this wouldn't be right if I didn't mention my brother and a few things that him and my mom had. Because I gotta tell you right now, he was her boo. And uh, like the time when we was young and playing in the backyard at a friend, friend of my mom's house, and we were riding on that. I was going around on a ride lawnmower, and Jack, this guy we knew, run up behind me, was gonna try to throw it off, and it backed over his foot. And throw that shoe to bits, but my mom would stay right next to that boy until I think probably three weeks later. But um, I wish you could be here right now. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. I just wanted to mention my brother. Let mama know how much she loves him and loves her, and uh, say goodbye in his place. So. Um, but anyway, once again, I'd like to uh, thank y'all for coming. And the book y'all signed on the way in, that little white book, wasn't actually the book that we bought to sign. I mean, we're going to keep that one too, but there's a black one out there. If everybody could sign it and write a little something about my in there with it, I mean, there's plenty of pages. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, I love each and every one of y'all. I thank y'all for being here. And bye. So uh, they're going to escort us exactly where to go at this time. I thank you all for celebrating Kathy with us.